This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, I'm Michael North, and welcome to the inaugural show of a new program here at Think Tech Hawaii. We're calling it Asia Pacific Business Strategies. So in this program, we're going to look out across the Pacific to the east to Asia and to the west to North America and to all of the Americas to try to identify some of the most important and interesting people and companies, technologies, and business strategies that shape our world today. And we'll look at the extraordinary people who happen to be right here in the center of the Pacific who are providing some very special insights to the world and sharing a spirit of aloha with the world. So we're going to be talking to a lot of uh, unique people, people of great accomplishment in business. And our first guest is particularly um, apropos for this, uh, for this program because she comes from Philippines, so she comes from Asia. She's lived a good part of her adult life in uh, Hawaii, and her husband is from, from uh, North America, from the East, and her, her name is quite unique. It doesn't sound like, like a Filipina at all. Not at all. Uh, it's, so she's completely Hawaiian, right? We have a, we have a beautiful gumbo here in uh, Joni Redekiant. So Joni, welcome to our program. Thank you, Michael, for having me. What an honor. Wow, yeah. I'm going to be the first uh, guest on your show. Yeah, the first I'm and the special. best. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you're, a, you're an award-winning beauty con contestant. You were Miss Honolulu and Miss Hawaii Mrs. U.S. Mrs. Mrs. Honolulu, Honolulu. International and Mrs. Mrs. Hawaii, Hawaii U.S. United States. 2002, yeah. so that was way back. When you, were, when you were 20 years old. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get married young. <laughs> but it was really an amazing, amazing experience. And uh, that's why it's my joy now to able to, to help this other younger generation to pass it on what I have learned. Mm. It is a lot of work to prepare for the pageant, but that kind of molded you too. It's a great foundation and to discipline you. And it it's, makes you a, a whole character. A positive person. It's something specifically for young women yes. to help them shape their life and their personality, their confidence and their leadership. Everything. So they can assume uh, their a better life, yeah, a, better a better successful life. life. And that's the goal here is uh, these are smart young women that will also help them to, to give back to the community at the same time, not just being beautiful. And uh, with Miss Paradise Hawaii, which is, I am the executive director, Miss Oahu and Miss Waikiki, three titles I will be giving away on October 22. So whoever win will now compete to Miss Hawaii, then to Miss America. Mm. So you were once one of those young girls. I was once, right? a long time ago. <laughs> um, but you didn't have a Joni to help you. No, right? I didn't have. You didn't have, have anybody to guide you into no. this path. Unfortunately. So how did you find the path on your own. Tell us a little story about how that happened. Well, thank you for asking and that interesting question, Michael. I Well, if I go way back uh, when I was five years old, I was way back in the Philippines with no running water, mm -hmm. no electricity, mm -hmm. but I had a big dream. Mm -hmm. And I always, um, you know, in, in my mind, visualizing to be uh, a beautiful woman, successful, beautiful woman. But then in my mind, it's like, Oh, how can it be? I am in the middle of rice fields and the farm. Mm -hmm. But somehow God knew and the universe knew what I wanted. So at age 14, uh, we came to Hawaii. I was very shy. Nobody believed me. Uh, but because of the dream that I, I wanted to fulfill, it, mm -hmm. it was hard. But I had to surround myself with successful, energetic, enthusiastic people. And somehow I was able to adapt that. And um, there's so many things I just I wanted to do. I wanted to excel in life. I wanted to be somebody and my children to be proud of mm -hmm. because I didn't have that with my parents, unfortunately, being in the province. 
So I slowly acquire that positive attitude and just great work ethic and just knowing that when you want something, no matter how far it would be or no matter how impossible it would be, but all the little things that you do every day, you can accumulate it, but always do great things, respect people, elderly people, and be honest to yourself. So that's what I tell so to the there kids. there may have been a spark. There may have been a moment or a person, a mentor, an example that helped you to adjust your sights from the rice fields to the pageant stage and beyond. Yes. What, what, what was that? Can well, you... uh, somebody that kind of inspired me actually is uh, Mary Kay Ash. Oh. Mary Kay, uh, kind of my mentor, although I have Pearlie Tanchet as well, who is the local director mm -hmm. at this time, and uh, they always encouraged me to be a part of the um, organization, the company, but I always tell them for the first two years, I'm not the sales type, I'm very shy, I do not like to talk to people. Mm -hmm. So for those who may not know, Mary Kay, of course, is a world-famous brand. Yes for cosmetics Cosmetic and brand. beauty products for women. Right. And it's, uh, it's a personal, sale, personal sales driven sort of, a, um, you go to people's homes and, right. you, and you show you, them. And, yeah. You kind of help them to, uh, with the, you teach them and educate them to yeah. um, how to take care of themselves. It's about grooming, uh, because when you, I always tell people, when you uh, look um, beautiful um, outside and you feel beautiful inside as well. So it kind of helped me uh, with Mary Kay um, Ash. She always thought to the young women that, you know, you, you, can, you have the can-do attitude, you have the positive attitude, visualize, mm -hmm. make sure you dream high and aim high. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of instilled in me um, at the time. So it's not just being beautiful, but yeah, Mary Kay Ash have um, been, uh, oh my gosh, she's been all different books. She um, the, um, oh. have her own books um, <clears throat> as well, who, and also that changed me at the same time because she actually um, authored this book that uh, you can have it all. Mm -hmm. And at the time, uh, being I was a nurse for almost um, 20 years with oh. young kids. So my, my life would always be like uh, go home, work, sleep, get up, same old routine. And so I, you went to college and became a nurse and, uh, in the middle of all of that. Yes, right? at the same time. So I'm always yeah. doing two, three, four things at the time. Yeah. <laughs> always, even now, too. Yeah. Uh, but um, so uh, that kind of, yeah, um, uh, to help me just, just seeing all these beautiful women to kind of help, like, okay, of who, who these people are. So I really look up to her. I look up to our um, American South Director here as well. So it's somebody that I, I always wanted to be just like her mm -hmm. because she did have a very, very, um, uh, very humble beginning as well mm -hmm. that, oh my God, if she can do it, I can too. Right. And have you ever met her, Mary Kay? She must I be an extraordinary did. lady. She very, very extraordinary, one of a kind. She has so many, many yeah. beautiful young women. I, you had to work really hard to meet her, so I had the privilege to, uh, to meet her and have lunch with her mm. uh, right before. Unfortunately, she had a, she had a stroke. So, mm. it's, it's, so what did she have to say to you that uh, you know the one thing? What? Yeah, the one thing that she told me that was she's so impressed. A, she's a multi-millionaire. She's extraordinary. Billionaire. Yeah. yeah, she's a multi-billionaire, actually. And she, Thousands, perhaps millions of people around the world are all, inspired all, by her example. And yes. Not only materially successful, but also successful from an inner standpoint. She gave so, so much. What did she give to Joni in that lunch? Well, what she gave to me, and I vividly remember, Michael, when I um, uh, finished my debut as American Sales Director with 50, they call it Fabulous 50. That's the only time you can have lunch with her. Mm. And so we were taking pictures, and I told her, it's like, oh, you're short like me. And she said, no, Joni. We're petite, and that's the first time that I heard about petite. Huh. So now, when people's like, "You're short," I said, "No, I'm petite." <laughs> <laughs> and she really look into your eyes. She make you feel very important, and that's the other message: make people important, mm. and just be humble. And so you've achieved a degree of business success. You've done well financially, you and your husband. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have great ideas and they have the ability to express enthusiasm and energy and so on, but the ability to transform that into a business successful platform is relatively rare. Um, what helped you to turn that key? Once you'd established the fact that 
yes, you're beautiful inside and outside and confident and so on, leadership, all of those great words. What right. helped to transform you into a successful business person? Million dollar attitude. <laughs> oh. Well, Michael, yeah. 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 I always say that attitude is everything. When you have the right attitude, everything follows. From believing in yourself, have the courage. And yes, there's a lot of people, they don't walk the talk. They can say all they want. They even put in writing week by week, you know, they, uh, a month or a year. What is their goal? But if they don't want to take action, if they don't have the courage and not willing to take a risk, and they're not determined, they then are able to achieve. And yes, it's very rare, but they have to have that work ethic as well. Are you willing to put so many hours in a day? Are you willing to work at night? Are you willing to work on weekends? It, it, takes, it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And like they said, that when you master something, you have to put in at least 10,000 hours mm. to master anything. Yeah. So what would you say you've mastered? What's your everything? What's your what's your trademark? <laughs> my, my, what I master is the positive attitude that no yeah. matter what, because Michael, like there's so much negativity. And you know, there was this young lady yesterday in my office that she's supposed to be one of the contestants, mm. but she withdraw and I says, why? Mm. And she said, Joni, I'm going through so much in my life personally, and I just I, I'm not in the state of mind. And I told her, but you know what, this would be the best thing for you because you're surrounded with, you know, like-minded people, positive people. We're here to help you, mm -hmm. to lift you up. Mm -hmm. Then this would be the best thing for you. And she was just telling me all everything that she was going through. And I told her, I said, you know what, that's part of life. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But when you have that positive attitude, you learn how to go over, under, beyond any obstacles. And I feel that, because I've gone through a lot. I lost my... My sister, my nephew, my I had a colon cancer six years ago. Mm. You know, I was in the hospital. The doctor tells me that you go home now. And I says, no, I want to stay here longer. <laughs> he was confused because I was prospecting the nurses, the night shift, the mid shift, the, <laughs> you know. So I just make life, everything is every uh, opportunity, everywhere you turn. Well, I've noticed this about you. We've, this is, I think, the second or third, the third time that we've met. Yes. And I've noticed that um, when you're in a room with somebody, you sort of light up the room and people oh. feel more positive, you know? There was a big gathering, a couple of hundred people, mm -hmm. and you could see that they were all being um, led by your example, by, by your smile and your enthusiasm, your light. Uh, lots of people have those qualities, but mm -hmm. not everybody is successful in communicating them in such a way that other people accept them, you know? What is your, some people feel intimidated by a person like you, right? And what is your, what is your key to not intimidating people to actually leading them? Um, I think by just, just being humble and you show them that you care. Mm. And when they, they look me up, actually, Google me, and they see all the things that I have done, but still able to, and just example with uh, Joanne. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. And the one thing that she remember is, and I didn't know her in the office, and mm. offering her something to eat, and tell her to sit next to me. Mm. And she just felt so compelled with that. She felt so like, oh, wow. But like, again, like I said before, just make everybody feel important. But just, just give them the genuine smile and that you care. Mm. And I believe that's what people see in me and they, they trust me and just don't be look arrogant. And I used to be in, uh, and get intimidated with somebody like with a suit. Mm. You know, I don't want to, I would be so shy. Mm. And like for me now, what I talk to everyone is dress to impress, dress for success, dress your best. Attract, not attack. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so it's a counterintuitive, but you're saying, I, I believe, that humility is a key to effective yes. leadership and inspiration. Exactly. Some people may have the idea that somebody who's highly effective and a leader is sort of distant, and they're, they've got their face to the sun, and they expect everybody else to follow in their shadow. Right. And, and that may be a strategy that works for some people part of the right. time, right. but your formula is entirely different. I mean, just look at Mother Teresa, mm -hmm. right? Very, very humble. Mary Kay Ash as well, very humble. Mm. So I believe that you'll be able to attract more people that way, mm. you know, um, instead of being arrogant or like you have everything and you're distant with 
the other people. But we are all, like I mentioned yesterday or the other day when we met, that we are all the same. Mm -hmm. It's just that maybe we look different, but we're supposed to act the uh, same thing. We have to respect and love one another. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's not, that's why they need to read my book. <laughs> How to have that the right attitude, yeah. <laughs> you know? It will get you somewhere in a well, better place. You have, you have the right attitude, but you also have skills. Which I developed for in the past 20 years. Organizing, yeah. managing, timing, yeah. prioritizing, yeah. and so on. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that when we come back from the break. Okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here at the Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm going to be right here. Stop by here from some of the best investment minds across the globe. And real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds, managers, all of that great stuff. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Okay, so we're back here with Joni reddick yunt and we're talking about the habits and ideas of a highly successful person. Joni, I'm trying to penetrate a layer deeper now mm -hmm. and just to understand on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you organize and manage your time? Sometimes just people need an example mm -hmm. to follow, not to copy, but something that can guide them. You, I'm sure you have tools for managing your time, your communications, your priorities, your mm -hmm. calendar, your metabolism, your, yeah. what, is, what does your day look like? How does it start and how do you get your face on in order to <laughs> Great <the> question. World? <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for the, another great question. Well, I normally um, start with um, uh, spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So before I get up, I thank God that, hey, I'm, I'm awake. <laughs> and then I start, you know, physically, I do my exercise, um, different type of exercise, you know, from stretching to yoga to whatever, or walk, you know, 30 minutes walk, because it's so important to balance everything. You have to have a healthy lifestyle. And then, um, of course, then I make sure that I eat my healthy, healthy breakfast and then get ready or and then make phone calls or whatever I need to do. But the night before, which I learned from uh, Mary Kay Ash as well, that lists your six most important things to do at the next day. Oh, so the day so starts the night before. Right, but I have 20 things. No. Six is not enough. <laughs> so I have all of that written down. So I know exactly where I'm gonna do. Your subconscious mind's already thinking you so, write it down before you go to yes, sleep? Yes, yes. Oh. You have to write it down because it, it somehow it locked in into your subconscious mind. Mm. Otherwise, then, because I, I do so many things from uh, being, you know, work, my full-time job, my Fame Savai, which is a nonprofit organization for where you guys were a keynote speaker at our free business and leadership workshop. Thank you, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, for being there. And then, of course, with uh, my, my pageant, uh, Miss Paradise Savai, Miss Oahu, and Miss Waikiki. Mm -hmm. And then also with TV station, my TV show as well. Mm -hmm. And also um, volunteering for American Heart Association, mm -hmm. National Kidney Foundation, all kinds of other nonprofit organizations. So I'm constantly just out there. If I don't mm. jot it down, then I'm, I'm not as productive already. Do you feel like it's work? Ah, if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. And mm. that's why people ask me, Michael, is like, oh, are you working really hard because you're going to retire early? Mm. And I said, no. I said, I retire when I die. <laughs> yeah. And But because I enjoy it so much, uh, it seems like sometimes it's too much, but 
I look forward to it. It's I'm, I'm, I'm driven. I guess I there's a look forward for those exciting moments, exciting day. Oh, I'm going to see Michael today. I'm being interviewed. Mm -hmm. Ah, how exciting it is. Oh, I'm going to see Dr. Sayo before that. Mm -hmm. So, and I have other people. So, I want to look at my appointments. I make sure that in my appointments that I have exciting every day. Some, something that important people that I look, um, I so meet Joni, with. So, Joni, what do you do to pick yourself up when you fall down or something appears to knock you down? Mm -hmm. and, and that um, happens. That happens, yeah. it's a natural part of it's, the rhythm of life, right? right? No one's exempt from it, no. from the president on down to mm -hmm. a homeless person on the street. We, we all have a rhythm that takes mm -hmm. us through challenges right. and through great days. But what do you do when something really sad or painful happens to you, when there's a setback, mm -hmm. either business or personal? What is your inner process for turning that around? Well, what I do is I turn the um, adversity into a, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I always turn it around. Just an example. I, uh, one o'clock at night, because I work late at night, I was driving in the freeway. I had a flat tire. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. So, of course, I called my car insurance. I need a tow truck. And then I have this policeman that stopped. I so are you me, like cursing away? Like, damn it, I got to get home. It's so late. I'm tired. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it, it doesn't tire. even enter my mind. Okay. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I guess because I already know, I mean, okay, I have blood tire. What, what else can I do? I can scream, cry, mm -hmm. but nothing changes. So I'll just say it's a temporary setback, and then I just have to make the best of it. So I just have to call car insurance. Policeman came and helped me, um, asking me, like, oh, what happened? I'm in my business suit, and um, he's like, what are you doing in the middle of the night like this? Mm. And I said, well, I'm sorry, officer. I just um, I had a flat tire, and I just came from work. Mm. And then um, I asked him, like, you know, with my company, we, uh, we insure all the uh, police officers. Mm. I told him, I gave him my card and said, by the way, do you have children? Mm -hmm. He said, yes. Do you have college funding? Mm -hmm. And no. Oh, okay, great. Give me your number in the dark now. <laughs> so I was able to get his number. A week later, we get together, and uh -huh. I was able to, uh, he became my client. So you gave him your ticket rather than yeah, giving him that's your right. <laughs> But I always try to turn things around. And mm -hmm. like when I was diagnosed with colon cancer, because my friend, uh, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, she told me, she said, Joni, I was just crying, crying. Did well, what you could cry? possibly be good about colon cancer, Joni? Oh, it, that's not good at all. Colon cancer, it's, it's actually now, um, it doubled from uh, four years ago, unfortunately. Now, it's, and that's the question that I asked you before, because I, a healthy lifestyle, I exercise, think positive and all that, but unfortunately, I was eating one wrong kind of food, mm -hmm. microwave popcorn, to keep me awake while I'm driving like 12, 1 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So either I could be in, so the way I looked at it, I could have died in a car accident, or, but that's okay. I mean, that's just part of life again. Mm. So I just had to kind of like, okay, God, I said, I'm ready if you're ready to take me, but I would like to, to live a lot longer because I want to continue to inspire your people. So that kept me going. Uh, yes. So for those of us who are watching locally here in Hawaii, you know, we have a global audience here. Yes. Um, let me know how we locally can connect with you. Um, because you have a number of different levels on which you work. And if somebody wanted to reach you about one of these things, how, how would they connect with you on the, on the web or otherwise? Yeah, well, of course, uh, my phone number. Okay, is it listed? Or 808-781-5905. Um, mm. Or my email, that's Joni, mm. J-O-N-I-M-D-A, mm -hmm. at yahoo.com. Okay. Or contact you as well. Yeah, through this, yeah. Through this program. Through this program, exactly. Yeah, and if uh, there's a young woman who wants to get into this uh, beauty pageant mm -hmm. training kind of, because you do a, a whole preparation and education yes. and you do a whole mentorship the program, whole the beauty camp, uh, the, the beauty mm -hmm. pageant boot camp yes. you do, how, how, does, uh, how does a young lady get in contact with you for that? They can even go to our website as well, mm -hmm. Miss Paradise uh, Hawaii. ParadiseHawaii.com. Uh -huh. And again, with my uh, my phone number at, uh, again, area code 808-781-5905. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a book available on Amazon.com, right? Yes, yes. And go and read my five-star review. I'm still waiting for your 
five star review. <laughs> well, I haven't read it yet, so I, <laughs> oh, it has to be yet. a real five star review. <laughs> yes, it has to be. So yeah, I'm I'm so blessed to have some great five star reviews in there, and also uh, Barnes and Nobles. Um, right. Or come in my office and I can autograph it right there and then. So million dollar attitude, you will look that up on Amazon. Yes, just okay. type that in and you will see all the um, uh, my book in there and the reviews and. Well, Joni, it's wonderful to meet a beautiful, effective, and inspiring leader like you, and especially what you're doing for young ladies. And thank you for your time. Thank today. you, Michael, for having me. It's been a pleasure. Great pleasure too. Thank you and God bless. We'll Aloha. see you next time at the Asia Pacific Business Strategies. Aloha. Aloha.